a shot fired off, and that is in at the back of the net. What a beautiful start for the home side. What a goal. You will not see a better goal than that. It is New Year's Day in the opening game of 2018. Who will get the year off to a better start? It is round nine of the Westfield W League today. Western Sydney versus Melbourne City. ANZ Stadium is the stage for this match and it will be a battle to stay in touch with the top four and hopefully find a place in it come semi-final time. Hello and welcome to W League on Sunday. I am Amy Duggan. Joining me today, Sarah Walsh, former Matilda, and Matilda's assistant coach, Gary Vanderbilt. Great to have you both with us as we take a look at this match today. As I said, a big one and points really important today. 2017, Sarah, was a huge year for women's football. Can this year get even better? Yeah, well, how do we top it? Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, I think we're up for a really good match today. I think we're in a really good position with our W League. Uh, any of the top six, seven teams can make the finals still. So makes for today a really exciting game with one team playing for pride, you would say, and one playing for points trying to make the finals. So Just, You're calling that one really well, it's early. Really early. <laughs> it's tough, but um, look, uh, I think they need to play better today, the Wanderers. Big game, Gaz. It's going to be a very, very big game. I mean, look at Melbourne City. They've come here. Haven't travelled too uh, well this season. If you have a look at their form, but uh, the Wanderers are going to be desperate. Really, this is their grand final, isn't it? And if they don't get a result today, it's going to be very difficult to see them playing finals football. On the other hand, we're looking at the, the same picture for, for City. I mean, if they're in a position where they, uh, they slip up today, again, it's, it's going to be very difficult for them to make that, that final four. We talked about their form and, uh, earlier today and away from home. They've not been great. No, they haven't been great. Uh, I think they've, they've had the win against Canberra, but I think that's the only win they've had uh, away from home. So they're probably looking to rectify that today and, and get three points. And Western Sydney, Sarah, they've got a couple of imports that do a really good job, but uh, across the board, not great performances. I think they've, they've taken a while to actually gel, um, and we'll get to speak to the coach soon. I'd love to hear his thoughts on where, where he'd like to actually develop, what, what are the areas, because I love the Falcon, uh, the Israeli international in the middle uh, of the park. She's going to play in the 10 position today, possibly a false nine. It'd be great to see her on the park up against the King and uh, Fishlock, up against a really good squad today. I think for me, uh, they've got a very, very young and inexperienced team in really crucial positions across the park. Got some amazing young talent coming through, um, but I just think they've, they've probably needed a, a couple of older heads around, around the team. Well, despite their positions on the ladder, and we are going to take a quick look at the ladder now, there is a bit of significance in this game because what the three points means for these two, for City, in fifth at the moment, take three points and move just outside or equal with Perth in the top four. Western Sydney in eighth there, but a three would actually take them equal with Melbourne City there on the ladder and just outside the top four. Absolute logjam, but Brisbane Raw sitting pretty at the top of the Newcastle Jets coming not too far behind. That's yeah, very much so. I mean, if you look at it, probably the Newcastle, Newcastle Jets are the ones that uh, are the surprise packet. I mean, it, especially with the, the fact of, of, of their roster and who they have. I know they've had some uh, some overseas players and some Matildas who have come in to, to bolster that squad late on. But realistically, if you look at them, and I think it was stated in the commentary that, you know, their whole back four is is uh, is Australian, mm. uh, which is a rarity in, in the W League. And, uh, you know, they've done fantastically well. Well, Western Sydney will have plenty to play for today, but we will find out how these teams line up. Steph Brands will have the team news for us in just a moment, but there is some big news, obviously, for Melbourne City. Do you want to break it or shall I? Jodie Taylor it. signed this week, obviously, yeah. uh, from England. Huge player, great goal scorer. Will she start today? That's the question we all have. Well, I, I, pro I probably wouldn't start her. She's been here a couple of weeks, but I think they probably want to keep what they've had. Um, for me, this is twofold. Jodie Teller is one of the best strikers going around in the world at the moment. Top goal scorer at Euros. Uh, really in form for a national team. Look, I think that's what Melbourne City's been lacking. Uh, an out-and-out -out goal scorer up top. Um, Lucy Crummer's been left at home, so I'd be interested to know what's going on there. But Jodie Taylor is a missing piece to their puzzle. Um, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna, uh, call it now. They're going to be a way better team with Jodie, stating the obvious, but I think it's what they've been missing. Well, we will find out if she lines up. Let's go to Stephanie Brands with the team news for today. Thanks, Amy. Well, the heat is on here at ANZ Stadiums with both coaches knowing exactly how important three points are today. So let's take a look at who they've gone with, starting with the home side. And Rich Byrne has made one enforced change to the side that beat Adelaide in the Wanderers' last outing. Wyman, of course, between the sticks. She'll have a back four of Roberts, Baldus and Brush, with Kalia Hogg moving to left back in Kramer's absence. Midfield duties fall to Labonta, Ponson Cam and Pieti, with Olivia Price coming into the side on the left flank, while up front Israeli international Lee Falcon joins Erica Halloway to lead the attack. 
For the visitors, Patrick Kisnorbo has so many internationals to choose from. He has tinkered with the 11 that started the 2-0 loss to Brisbane before the Christmas break, so Williams as ever between the sticks. The defence stays the same, with Cat Lee making her 100th W League appearance. So too the midfield unchanged, while up front Ashley Hatch and Kai Simon will be joined by TJ Vlinich, who gets a rare start after performing well in training. Jodie Taylor, who joins the squad this week, will start from the bench. So, Amy, while well, on paper you'd have to say the portents favour Melbourne City, what can a desperate Western Sydney Wanderers do today? Thank you, Steph France. We will find out right now. Let's ask their coach, Rich Byrne, coach of Western Sydney Wanderers. Thank you for your time pre-game. We know how important this time is to a squad getting ready for a big match like this one. You guys are sitting second last on the ladder. You did have a, a, a you know, couple of good results and you picked up your second win the other week. Lee Falcon was one of the players that got on the scoreboard for you there. How's she going? Yeah, it's good. Uh, last week uh, we travelled to Adelaide and we got a vital three points, which kind of, uh, it, it still kept our season alive, albeit it's going to be very difficult, but we've got something to play for. And, and speaking of Lee, she got on the score sheet last she week. How, how did you get in contact with her? Lee, um, last year I went over to Europe and, um, you know, to go back home to, to see family and I did a, look, like a little bit of research around the leagues there. Um, what, um, what struck me was she became available and um, available for ma the majority of the pre-season as well. So four weeks. Um, so I thought, you know, she's a, good, a very good player, a very good pedigree in the, um, in the top leagues in Germany. And um, she's a good addition to our squad. Okay. Uh, Richie, you've put a lot of faith in, in a lot of, I guess, younger players playing in the women's NPL here. Um, how do you think they're tracking? Do you think they're, they're far off the mark or have you, have you expected a little bit more from them? Or I guess, what is it that, that I think um, you'd probably like to work on to, to make the finals? Yeah, look, I think if you look at all of our games, apart from one, and that was a derby, where, and I'll be honest, with Sydney FC, they taught us a lesson, OK? Every other game that we've played, we've, we've created goal-scoring chances. Yeah. They're literally in the front of the goal, and we miss. Um, not saying we deserve to win or anything like that, but any other given Sunday, them chances go in and goals change games. Yeah. Um, Obviously, as uh, you know, the season progresses, we, uh, you know, the girls will get better, more comfortable with each other's roles, and I think uh, we're going in the right direction. We just need to be a bit more clinical in the um, in front of the goal, and as I said before, goals change games. And, and in fairness, you haven't lost the games that you have lost haven't been by much, and they've been very, very tight games. They've been very, very tight that, games, yeah. and and that's all credit to, to the girls. They've uh, they've uh, they've um, stuck to uh, their job off the field. Uh, so sorry, on, sorry, off the ball on the field. And um, like you say, we've, we've been there or thereabouts in games. Rich, where do you see today as being the biggest challenge for you? Where do you see City challenging you the most and where do you think you can exploit City? Yeah, well, if, if you look at both teams on paper, Melbourne City are the favourites. There's no question about that. But the reality is we are three points behind them. And if we win, then, you know, our season's alive still. I think um, they will have the ball. There is no question about that. They are very comfortable with the ball. And, and, and for me, they're one of my favourite teams to watch in the W League. I think it's a case of being organised and if they do have the ball, limit them being dangerous with it. Uh, feeding their dangerous players. And, um, but like I say, it's, uh, there's one thing saying it and the other thing is doing it. Did you, did you watch the game? They played Brisbane, obviously, and went down. Did you take any tactics out of that game that you'll use today? Yeah, I watched all the games. And, and to be honest... They have been unlucky in front of the goal as well. Um, I think um, the whole league in general, I think tactically every team's got better. Um, and today we just, uh, we have to believe. You know, we can't go onto that field and be scared. At the end of the day, it's two teams with a ball and we've just got to be comfortable with it. All right, Rachel, we wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, great to chat to you and, and as I said, all the best. And Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year. Good luck, Rich. Good <laughs> well, luck. We will find out if, if it is a Happy New Year for the Melbourne City team. We caught up with their coach, Patrick Kisnorbo, a short time ago. Patty, Happy New Year to you. You start 2018 in fifth position. Are you starting to feel the pressure? Uh, not really. Um, you know, we have a we have a purpose, and obviously, there's a lot of points to pick up. Um, obviously, including today's game, we know it's a big game, but we still believe uh, what we can achieve this year. Jodie Taylor joins today, and for the rest of the season, how do you see her fitting, and what will her role be? Um, look, she plays a, a pivotal role. Obviously, she's an experienced player. Um, she's an international player, so um, hopefully, she gives us a wealth of experience and a lot of goals this year. You said this game's important today. Uh, what's your message? Three points. Sounds like a plan. Have a good one. Thank you very much. That right Thank now. You.
thank you very much, Steph. We will find out very soon how this game will unfold. But one of the important factors today, I think, for Melbourne City, we've talked about them over and over again. I know they're bringing Jodie Taylor in and we're going to have a little look at her having a warm-up and starting on the bench and she will definitely inject something if she comes on. But this is a team full of superstars, full of Matildas, and for me, they're underperforming. Yeah, to be, to be really fair, we've been sitting here talking about them like they're on top of the ladder. Um, I think it's more to the point that they're actually, uh, they're underperforming and we're talking to their potential. Are we going to see that today? Because that'll determine whether or not they they uh, take out the plate this year. Yeah. Not sure they can still take it out, but we haven't seen that yet. I think Jodie, uh, Jodie Taylor, injecting her into this strike force, giving um, the, the midfielders an option, you know, Fishlock's not then having to actually uh, create everything. They'll be able to link in the midfield. I just think she changes this game for this team. Um, and look, I'll be really disappointed if they don't turn up and play with the team they have on paper. And Gary, last week, of course, Brisbane got the better of Melbourne City and they did that by excluding that midfield. Will that be the game plan again today, do you think? Well, you'd hope so, but just talking to Rich, it looks like he's going to drop and park the bus, doesn't it? So it'd be interesting to see the tactics that he employs, but it was really good to see, you know, Brisbane get out and have a real go at them and, and, and cut off the supply, not so much from the point of view of looking to see how they can ensure that, you know, they keep their, their goal intact from a, 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 a deep-lying area. And they outpossessed them. Very Brisbane much Hall. so. They did. And, and what it was, they picked the ball up in really, really good areas, and especially in that middle third, and then they were able to counter. And, and even even when they were hit on the transition and we saw that goal by um, the young girl, I, her Maritone. name is... Yeah, she, we, she um, had the ball over the top, and then you look at uh, Claire Polking, and we saw that straight away, and, you know, it was fantastic. Well, we are in for a battle this afternoon. I'm pretty sure I know where both of you are sitting as far as tips go, so I won't bother asking. On paper, Melbourne City, the clear favourites. Western Sydney Wanderers with some work to do, but they will battle very hard. Kick-off for this Westfield W League match. Western Sydney taking on Melbourne City from ANZ Stadium this afternoon. Coming up shortly, Sarah Walsh will head up to comms. Gary Van Egmond and I will be back at halftime to wrap up all the action. Enjoy the game. Happy New Year to all of you joining us for this first Westfield W League Clash of 2018. It is an intriguing match ahead as we head into the home stretch of the regular season. Both the Western Sydney Wanderers and Melbourne City fighting to stay in touch with the top four. For the Wanderers, a win today is a must ahead of a tricky run home. And for the defending premiers, well, they find themselves in unfamiliar territory outside the final spots with just five matches remaining in the regular season. Well, it is a sunny summer's day to kick off the new year with the temperature hovering around 27 degrees. Breeze of 27 kilometres an hour ruffling the corner flags, but that 65% humidity does make it feel quite warm down in the middle. Well, it's always an intriguing time for the W League as it heads in towards the finals. Just five matches remaining. Of course, all sides will have a bye, but it's desperate times perhaps for the Wanderers who really need a win to keep their season alive. On paper these sides certainly look very different indeed. However, football's a funny game and a desperate Wanderer side, can they do something really special today? The fans moving into ANZ Stadium, they're in for a treat today, a double header of course with the respective men's sides also in action. And, uh, well, the youngest Wanderers fans certainly ready for some entertainment. The coaches heading out. They're certainly starting to feel the pressure, you would think. In Northern City, it's unfamiliar territory for them, sitting outside the finals. You see Steph Catley and okay, Erica Holloway, who've been given the captain's armbands today. As the sides head out for a big afternoon of football. Holloway and Ellie Brush, of course, co-captains of this Wanderers side. Holloway gets the honours today. A couple of goals this season and uh, doing very well. Former uh, Wanderers Player of the Year a couple of years ago. You got Jess one? Fishlock, the former captain and coach of Melbourne City. Bringing up the rear as the two sides make their way out to greet 2018 in the Westfield W League.
Well, let's take a check on the team news now and see who the respective coaches have entrusted with duties today. For the home side, Rich Byrne has made just one force change to the side that beat Adelaide in the Wanderers' last outing after losing Talitha Kramer to injury. Wyman takes her customary spot between the sticks, while the back four is Roberts, Valdas, Brush and Kalia Hogg, who moves to left back in Kramer's absence. Midfield duties fall to Labonta, Ponsonkam and Pieti, with Olivia Price coming into the side on the left, while up front, Israeli international Lee Falcon joins Erica Holloway to lead the line. For the visitors, Patrick Kisnorbo, while well, he has no less than seven players who currently represent their countries at senior international level, with Jodie Taylor joining the squad ahead of this clash, he's tinkered with that 11 that started the 2-0 loss to Brisbane before the Christmas break. So while Williams is as ever in goal, the defence too stays the same as usual, with Catley making her 100th W League appearance today. In the midfield, likewise, there's no changes, while up front, Ashley Hatch and Kaya Simon will be joined by TJ Vlinich, who is getting a rare start while Dobson drops to the bench alongside Taylor Jackson and Melissa Hudson. Well, the two coaches, you'd think that Rich Byrne would perhaps feel the most pressure on this occasion. Their results thus far have been pretty close, but his side hasn't been able to land that killer blow. They boast the second tightest defence, but the problems are converting at the other end and Byrne will undoubtedly want to see more in the back of the net today. His opposite number is probably no doubt having similar thoughts. Patrick Kisnorbo, the former captain of the City men's side, took over at the beginning of this season with the team coming off unprecedented back-to-back -back titles. However, if they're to make it a triple treat this year, Kisnorbo needs his big guns to fire. With the whistle today, the most experienced W League referee, Kate Jakowitz, current referee of the year in the league. That's an award she has picked up no less than seven times. She'll be assisted by Sarah Ho and Delfina Domoski. They'll run the lines with Kelly Jones our fourth official. Players in their huddles as they prepare for kickoff. Steph Catley, as I mentioned, celebrating her 100th W League appearance today. A stalwart at the back line for both club and country. City captain has just gone from strength to strength throughout her career. Oh, on the opposite side, Ellie Brush is the most experienced double league player on the pitch today. This is her 109th outing. Though of course, most of those were in a green shirt before her move to the Wanderers this season. Oh, City, the last side to uh, take their places in their formation. One wonders who will be the happier to start 2018 in some 90 minutes' time. Jackowitz with the quick check that all is well. And gets us underway. Happy New Year in the W League. And it's Happy New Year to Sarah Walsh. Next to me in commentary with City kicking from right to left on your screen. Uh, Walsh, it looks like it could be a mismatch, but you never know, do you? No, you don't. Happy New Year, Steph. I think... Uh be remiss of us to completely dismiss Wanderers if they're organised, like Rich said, Rich Byrne. Well, they've slipped it through already and a trip outside the box, uh, gratefully and easily gathered in by Jada Wyman. And from the, the pre-match, you, you could hear that uh, Rich Byrne has already conceded that Melbourne City will have most of the possession, uh, but it's how well his team organ gets organised and, and discipline in, in their one-on-one -on -one defending especially. And, one matchup I'm very interested in is Roberts, who's on the ball here. How well she really limits uh, the amount of impact Steph Catley can have on this game down the left. You know how they love, Melbourne City love to release her down the left hand side. So if they can get plenty of one on ones and get an overlap with uh, TJ Vlanich, that'll be something to look out for. Certainly, we're always so used to seeing. Catley make those speedy runs down the left wing. TJ Vlanich, and uh, perhaps unusual addition to the starting 11. Look, I'm, I'm very uh, surprised. I, we haven't found out why La Larissa Crummer has been left at home, but uh, you know we're not there during during the week for training, and we're hearing that uh, TJ Vlanich has, has played herself into this squad. Well, no easy feat in this uh, city side. They've got plenty of talent, as we mentioned in the pregame. Jodie Taylor has joined the side from Arsenal as uh, City go on another surging run. Ball left behind, picked up by the Western Sydney Wanderers. And it's Lee Falcon that uh, tries to bring it down. Yes, Jodie Taylor uh, finished the season with Arsenal. 
uh, the women's side and uh, has she'll be heading off to Seattle Rain in 2018 but has come in for the last well five or six weeks of this W season of course she hopes to be playing finals it's a really smart tactical move to to bring Jodie Taylor in as a guest player I think you know at the pointy end the business end of of the W League um, and I've spoken about it plenty of times I think they've been lacking out in that department well, it's a lovely throw there for uh, Ivy Lewick to pick up. Unfortunately, couldn't quite control. Be keen to see which of these sides settles first as Simon goes back to Catley. One, two between the two Matilda teammates. Great work from Olivia Price in defence for the Wanderers, but it has been set free on the far side. Only Brush too experienced not to pick that up. And already in that play, we get to see the forward runs from the midfielders, Fishlock and Kinger, running on beyond the line of uh, uh, defence. It just creates so many more problems for this Wanderers back line who are really only uh, prepared to pick up Kai Simon, Hatch and Vlanich. You can just see how dangerous they are when they push numbers forward. Falcon again into the fray. Lewick too quick. And it's City off on a run again. Hatch takes the uh, challenge to the Wanderers. Slips it through for Simon. Bounces back awkwardly. Fishlock is there. Skies it over the bar, but uh, well, the opening volley has been fired. Well, they're moving it around well, aren't they? And just with huge amount of conviction their passes are on point but here the worry for me is that before this is skied over Kai Simon was able to pick up the ball with no real touch type defending from Ellie Brush Robert sending it uh, back to her Dutch woman teammate Waldus it's been a wonderful addition in fact uh, Rich Byrne has made some Really classy signings as uh, now we see Halloway off on a run for the Wanderers. Can they make this one count? Up, up, up. So stream forward in red and black. Price can't quite gather. Ball goes loose, but she does retrieve. And the Wiley Fishlock leaps in. Some really classy signings from Rich Byrne. And uh, would you expect them to perhaps have been a bit more clinical? Well, you can see that uh, outlet in Halloway, and, and it's no surprise that she's wearing the captain's armband. She's been such a stalwart for this Wanderers squad. As you said, she was Wanderers Player of the Year. Um, she's been rewarded with that armband, but you can see she loves to get the ball in behind, and that'll be a dangerous point for, for Western Sydney Wander uh, for Melbourne City. Sorry. Now, on a run, sending it on the far side to Kalia Hogg, who's swapped sides for this match. She's been playing on the opposite flank, a little bit higher up the park. The injury to Talitha Kramer. In fact, uh, Western Sydney Wanderers have been beset by ankle injuries. They've lost three players, Jennifer Bissett and Sonny Franco as well, to ankle injuries, while Chloe O'Brien picked up a strain. So far from a full-strength side. Bet they'll be fighting today. Simon neat flick on to Fishlock. Simon again. Oh, that's a good ball for TJ Vlinich. Tries to control. She's got Roberts bearing down on her. Still with Vlinich. No one to cut back to. see in that uh, pass Sarah how dangerous they can be when you release the ball perhaps a little bit of inexperience maybe from Vlinich that she couldn't get the release she was after yeah well she probably needed to hold the ball up a little bit she didn't have any support in the box look she's done it there for Steph Catley indeed at least it beautifully for Catley and Catley shows her experience looking for options Vlinich back to Kinger Some ball Bounces out and regathered by the Wanderers, only to be immediately turned over. So build up stance again for City. It was quite a neat pass from uh, Vlanich. Unfortunately, went by the feet of 
Jessica Fishlock. You see Labonta there making sure Jess Fishlock knows she's there. That was a really strong tackle to win the ball. It's going to be a great matchup today. Neatly kept in by Susie Komsong Cam, un unfortunately. It's another cheap turnover as Kai Simon goes on run. What a beautiful ball from Simon to dodge around Valdis. It was a beautiful ball from Simon to Simon. <laughs> she did a great job there. You can see the, the issue for Wanderers will be they're, they're going to spend a lot of time without the ball. So when they do get it, they really need to value possession and make sure they work really, really hard off the ball. You get to see the replay here, Simon. She's in really good form. She's had plenty of touches so far today. And on the throw falls for Fishlock. It's rebounded out. I see a little bit uh, scrappy. We mentioned before the class they have on paper. Are you terribly surprised to see what's unfolded for them this season? Yeah, I, I am surprised they're a bit further down the ladder, but uh, if you think about it, we've, we've really only measured them on the you know, names on the paper in previous seasons, but this is a very different looking squad. Uh, but I, I think that's it's probably not good enough for when you rattle through the names in their midfield, especially this player on the ball, Kinger. So they've got amazing talent on the field, and, and what they do have is a, a wealth of experience. I mean, this one on your screen here, World Cups and Olympics. And played with some of the best players in the world. Yeah, one of the most decorated players on the planet, Yukari Kinga. Came over from Canberra United last season. Neat pass to Jess Fishlock now. Tries to send it through for Ashley Hatch, just out of reach. Now it's Carly Hogg on the far side. Beautiful afternoon here at ANZ Stadium. Rather larger than the uh, women's teams are used to playing in, but of course a double header with the men's sides. And Wanderers men's also fighting very hard for a win tonight. All that to come later. It'd be very interesting indeed if the women could do the job first. That would put them a couple of places up the table. Keep them very much still in the mix, such as the logjam nature of the W League table at the moment. Stott finds Hatch. Kalia Hogg, one of the uh, younger players. I beg your pardon, one of the players that's come through the ranks. As a very talented youngster, of course, she's now 24 years old, but... Uh, Still youngster. She ha <laughs> Not to me. <means. laughs> I'm looking at 16 and 17-year-olds. <laughs> so she's uh, she's almost a veteran. Of course, had a four-year scholarship over in the States. And has really developed very well indeed. Fishlock forced to track back now Simon and therefore Vlanish but couldn't bring it down and Jackowitz whistle goes well I know this was offside but I actually like this with Melbourne City they really really I guess you could call that a long ball but really change things up and, and surprise the defense they've got such a strong passing game that players uh, the defense will look up and make sure they have their player checked but there they changed it up for a long ball out to Vlanic. Really caught Western Sydney off guard. She was on side there, she was on, she was off on goal. And the service to their strikers cut off once more, this time by Alana Kennedy. Far too wise not to pick up a pass like that. And the call to go as uh, City runs away, Ashley Hatch for options. She's got a couple inside the area. And booted away by Valdus. Not for long though, Hatch again on the ball and a bit of miscommunication. And poor pass means that Steph Catley's now nipped in. Vlainic. The ball goes well beyond the far post. 
and perhaps once more a uh, maybe a poor decision. It was a good defensive pack, uh, passage from Western Sydney Wanderers. The cross was great from Vlanic. Prior to that, they'd kept Melbourne City out. Melbourne City just pushed so many numbers into the box. Every single attack, you'll see Kinger and Fishlock adding those numbers. Fishlock muscles Falcon off the ball. Falcon, of course, on the score sheet last week. All sorts of titles all around the world. Israeli Cups. In the uh, league title there a couple of times as well. The thing for Wanderers, they'll really need to make sure that they can get Falcon on the ball. She's hardly touched the ball. You'll find she's playing a little bit higher today. She's normally a 10, but she's sitting as a false nine. She'll need more service if Wanderers are going to be successful. Urgency both on the park and coming from the sidelines. So start to settle in as we head towards the quarter hour mark. We heard in the pregame uh, Gary Van Egmond mention the uh, possibility of parking the bus. Do you think uh, that's something we're going to see or both sides will? We haven't seen that so far. I've actually been uh, a little bit impressed. I don't want to call it too soon, but. Uh, the way that Western Sydney Wanderers are playing with the ball and playing out, they've pressed up high and they've been starting their defence from up top, so just give the ball away in really bad positions. Wasteful there from Labonta. That's a decent ball from Fishlock to Kaya Simon. Roberts in defence, now Vlanich. Catley comes forward. Slides it through to Kinger. Well, that was almost a very neat play by Melbourne City, and that's the sort of classy play we've seen from them in seasons past. Yeah, you can see how narrow they play. They love to play these tight little spaces, get touches on the ball, little combinations. You can see Kai Simon wasn't ready for that one. Would have been a beautiful goal if she had got a, kept, un, kept that under control. They're not playing with a lot of width at this point. They've not been able to release Steph Catley. the wasteful uh, turnovers. Uh, Rich Byrne frustrated. So we're to continue. And Fishlock runs it right at the feet of Hatch, who's been flagged already. And turn once again, ricochets off the head of Susie Ponsongham. Now she is one of the youngsters that's uh, been included in this side, 16 years old. She's a talent to watch. I'm hearing loads about her. Craig Foster raves about her. Uh, she's in the mini Matildas. Hopefully we get to see a little bit what she has today. She's up against one of the best left backs in the world, arguably. Indeed, but it's a wonderful challenge. We've seen so many of these youngsters, 15 and 16 years old, absolutely excel as you mentioned she'd already been on international duty at the under 19 afc championships in china the thing is it's it's always interesting to watch some players when they come into the w league and they're the mini matildas you know it really is girls of it against women and, and you really get to see how quickly they step up and, and one that comes to mind might be uh, princess abini for sydney fc she's someone that just come in and, and she was able to to really uh, join in with the pace of the game and the strength she needed on the ball because you know, it's so easy to get pushed off the ball. So these are the things I'm interested to watch with Fonsong Cam today. Indeed. I guess Carpenter, uh, another one. Uh, Remy Simpson has been fantastic. We've got a lot of talent coming through the, the ranks as Jess Fishlock goes off on a run. She's got Simon there. So she was in an offside position. You can see how narrow they attack. Jess Fishlock ran the ball centrally, and neither Simon or Hatch made a you know darting run out wide to really open up the space for Fishlock. It was all quite crowded. This is where I think someone like a Larissa Crummer or a Jody Taylor, who make those runs for a living, might add a little bit 
a little bit of a different dynamic to this strike force for Melbourne City. Oh, released once more by Fishlock's crossed in. Simon's there, leaps high. Now Vlinic has an opportunity. Well, and Wyman, their experience showing there. Clutched in and sends Alex Roberts on her way. Vlinic playing with plenty of intent. Back in defence. Falcon dispossessed by Fishlock. Hear the voices of both coaches issuing instructions from their technical area. Western Sydney starting to just very high in a bid to stop Melbourne City's advance. From Erica Halloway, Labonta to Roberts. Excellent play. Here, Rich Burns' encouragement, and he's, uh, he's right. The intent was fantastic. It was wonderful play. Unfortunately, it ended up back at Sky Blue Feet. And the brush cutting down the advance of. Jess Fishlock. Match again. And the delivery just off from Ivy Lewick. I'm really liking the intensity of, of this defence from Western Sydney Wanderers. I mean, aside from the fact they've, they've coughed up the ball in those crucial moments, that final pass, but what I have liked is their press on the ball has been to the highest intensity. And it's really, they're really making Melbourne City earn the right to go through the middle. They're not making it easy for them, but the worry is... Oh, as Halloway leaps in, nips in to intercept. Still Erica Halloway. Well, eventually too many blue shirts closing in around her. Melbourne City get numbers back. Difficult as an isolated Halloway there. But the issue that the Wanderers might have, and, and I guess the question will be, will Melbourne City be able to capitalise on these mistakes that Wanderers have been making in the back line? Uh, is their rest defence? They switch off when they don't have the ball. And it only takes one quick pass, that, that split moment where Melbourne City can take out an entire midfield with one pass. Well, now Rebecca Stott has gone off on a run. Hatch, essentially headed away. Kinger picks up again. And now it's back at the feet of Erica Halloway. Ops for Pomsongham. Well, the vision was good, but perhaps uh, broke down a communication with Olivia Price, who didn't continue her run. It's good they are looking to go forward. You mentioned their defence. It is the most uh, second most miserly in the league. It's just not uh, backed up at the other end by goal scoring. Catley manages to wriggle free. Still Catley. Simon to Fishlock. Oh, she fancied her chances. Perhaps uh, not patient enough. It's not bad for Western Sydney Wanderers if Melbourne City are resorting to having shots outside the D. They've done a really good job at keeping Melbourne City in front. Well, Barnes regathers, puts it at the feet of Kaya Simon. She searches for options. Kinger did make a run through. Well, still on for Melbourne City. Simon was there again. And now the shot's being uh, fired in anger, but again, Wanderers' defence well up to the challenge. You see Wanderers, they're actually frustrating Melbourne City at the moment. Melbourne City are losing that composure on the ball and, and patience in their build-up that we're used to seeing. Neat ball through from Jess Fishlock. Reeled in by Simon. Vlinich. It's in the air. A beautiful save from Jada Wyman. That's why she is the up-and-coming 
promising goalkeeper of the future. Well, she came out and took this. She was very sure about it, and she had to. She committed to it. A great job securing the ball. It's been ex an exciting prospect to watch, knocking on the door for the Matildas. Certainly is. One of her idols growing up was uh, Lydia Williams, so will she be the next one to fill her gloves, so to speak? Kennedy going for the long option this time. Height of Valdis intervenes. Flag is up. Uncharacteristic from Melbourne City to be forcing the ball. Halfway through the first half, would you say uh, either side has had the upper hand? Melbourne City certainly have had more opportunities. Well, there's no doubt that Melbourne City have, have controlled the match, 60% possession so far, but that's everything that we expected. Work between uh, the Bonter as Halloway runs down. Gets the ball on the near side and oh, tries to put it into the mixer, but not enough red and black shirts waiting. City on the counter attack now and uh, just weaving through the Wanderers traffic. Slid through for Simon, who unfortunately was already offside. Robertson Valdis, sorry, did a great job stepping up that, that last second, so it made it very, very tight. It was only so long Kai Simon could hold off her run. You see, they love playing in those tight spaces and, and playing that just that world class ball that's really going to beat teams and City in quite deep here when they're defending as well. One thing I will say about the attack of Wanderers, it's, um, you know, there's, there's not a lot that, that people know about the players like Halloway and, and Falcon, to be fair. So they bring this, uh, you know, a level of low level of predictability. You're not sure. So that when they do actually go forward, they look very, very dangerous. She's got a, a great amount of pace, Halloway, so she's quite unpredictable. Oh, this time it's Alex Roberts that used the pace. Might have copped a stray clip on the head on her way to the ground. Lewick's intent to uh, surely not to find Valdis of the Wanderers. And it's headed down by Falcon. Falcon forced to track back once more. Ponsang Ham can't pick it up. Catley does. Same again. Boots flying everywhere. Jess Fishlock. Oh, she just tried to trickle it through for Ashley Hatch. Decent tussle unfolding here. Yes. Lana Kennedy would be content to see that roll over the sideline. Rebecca Stock's done a decent amount of work already in this half. Fishlock again denied. Lyman had to come out very, very high there. Lucky she did, sweeping. Fishlock was ready for it. It wasn't a bad ball from Hatch. And it's Roberts that's forced once more to run. That battle seems to be more between her and Vlainich. It's a Ponson Cam that's having to pick up Catley. And Yukari Kinger. Simon, back to Lewick. Fishlock, 
goes for Stott, who finds Ashley Hatch waiting. Just out of reach. And the turnover is affected. Really patient build-up from Melbourne City. Comes to naught as well, the Bonta runs away. Manages to deliver the ball to the feet of Erica Holloway. Chance here for the Western Sydney Wanderers. Olivia Price not anywhere near enough pace on that, but perhaps the most dangerous the Wanderers have looked thus far. Well, it was an excellent, well-executed counter-attack. They really released the ball early. And they got players in the box. Falcon made sure she got in a good position. I think you could say that Melbourne City were caught out a little bit. It was three on three at the back. And the rest defence wasn't great. Not going so terribly smoothly for Melbourne City. Who would have thought that two seasons ago they were on the most incredible undefeated run? to work a whole lot harder this season. Well, I think a lot of the teams have actually done a good job at, at um, you know, transforming their game and uh, playing in a way where you know you're not going to have a lot of possession. They're still, at this point, 28-minute mark, have 60% possession. And if you if you understand that and you get your, get your teams organised and, and they can do that for 90 minutes and play the counter really well, well you can see, based on that last attack... They are susceptible to a counter-attack and they didn't have the numbers back. So although they do push numbers forward and they really, really make teams defend well, they're a little bit worry, a little bit of a worry in their back line. And, and a team that did that amazingly well was Brisbane Raw a couple of weeks ago. I was up at that match and uh, I, I've got to say that I was very surprised at how well Brisbane Raw, I, I know I shouldn't say that with the players on the park, and it's no disrespect, they, they played Melbourne City at their own game and when you got a player on the park like Katrina Gorry, it was just such a joy to watch and, and then to try and watch Melbourne City and see what solutions they come up with when teams are willing to hold the ball. And they didn't, I don't think they handled it very well. They panicked on the ball and, and started to make errors they don't usually make. Mm. Brisbane were somewhat of a bogey team for her. For City and they've been extraordinary of course this season the Raw sitting at top of the table if you haven't seen the previous results a couple of points clear of the Newcastle Jets then trailed by Sydney and then Perth who slipped to defeat without Sam Kerr in the side what will be an exciting clash is the uh, Melbourne City Perth glory that's all, that awaits in the next round some exciting matches coming up and I can already see when Jody Taylor comes on in the second half, hopefully we get to see us. the tactical change that, that will happen. Kai Simon's a player that's not always going to stretch a defence so she plays, sits in that false nine as a ten position and there's so much rotation between the midfield. Jody Taylor will sit high. Fish lock in a bit of space and asking for another big run from Simon who Julie replies, Vlinich puts another ball in, it's over the head of Hatch. So where do you see uh, Jodie Taylor slotting in? Well, I see her playing up in the middle. And that might even, it'll either put Kaya Simon out wide or she might drop in, but one thing I'd love to see is Fishlock and Kinger playing in the midfield more. And here is Kinger. Kai Simon. Hatch was there. All too easy for Wyman. Well, it wasn't a bad play. There was a bit of miscommunication between Fishlock and Kinger. Made the same run and no one actually went to the ball. They had a near post run. Just had a safe pair of hands so far, Wyman. Erica Holloway showing her fleet footedness again. Can't get around Cutley. Good result for Halloway. She's been lively up top so far. As you see, when you're defended for so long, it's very difficult to be able to get numbers forward. She had no support in the box. So a corner is not so bad. So first corner of the game for Western Sydney Wanderers. Plenty of options as 
Olivia Williams stands ready in the city goal. Falcon to deliver. Oh, it's right centrally. It's sitting there still for the Wanderers. Oh, and it's just flashed wide. So very close. Williams didn't deal with it initially. Looked like it could have been a real chance. They will have a, another corner, though. Oh, well, this is a missed opportunity for Ellie Brush. She attacks the ball perfectly. And it's come off the side of a boot. It was an excellent corner. Great pace on the ball. And they look dangerous there. So take two. In similar position this time. Headed away, still there. Oh, Wanderers chasing down, Ellie Brush. Can't quite keep it in. And there is a player down now, has been caught in the fray. Sutton. Or is it Price, sorry? Olivia Price. <laughs> yeah, she's copped the ball to the face. Point blank range off the boot of Ashley Hatch. Nothing in here, girls. Come on. Kind of stung. She'll be feeling that for a wee while. She goes on as we go to the third consecutive corner for all the Wanderers. Can they make it count this time? In the mix and oh, headed away once more and this time much to Melbourne City's relief. It'll be a goal kick. Well again they win the contact, they win the header. kick uh, initially not finding its target and uh, while the ball was turned over momentarily it's uh, as I say that was in City's, uh, City's hands and it's uh, been really to and fro neither side has managed to have that real control and that clinical decision making and uh, all the clever possession I know we talk about having possession but uh, at the end of the day, you can have all the possession you want, can't you, if you don't uh, do enough with it? Well, here we are for uh, Melbourne City. Laid right in the middle for Kaya Simon, and uh, well, it took Valdos to send it to safety. Awful lot of room there for Jess Fishlock initially. She's got a great ball in to beat the defence. Kaya Simon reaching out for it. Now look. On for City again. Hatch couldn't latch onto that. Turnover affected by Rebecca Stott temporarily. And ten minutes or so remaining in this first half. Scores still nil all here at ANZ Stadium. Opening W League match for 2018. Comes on, can puts it right at the feet of Yukari Kinger, who gratefully sends it on its way to Vlinic. Okay, she's looked up and perhaps spotted Hatch on the far side. Will Kai Simon be able to intercept? So runs through Labonta. Kinger to Fishlock. And once again, Jada Wyman ends the attack of Melbourne City. With this back four for Western Sydney Wanderers have been pretty sound. They're moving as a unit. They've, they've stayed very narrow. Well, look at that ball for Erica Halloway. Still Halloway. Kennedy can't. Can't stop her initially. Oh, this all goes, but uh, Erica Halloway, those fast breaks, has been absolutely exceptional. Well, that's twice she's been able to beat Alana Kennedy. She's made the run in behind, gets the service. She's given away the free kick there. But again, you can see they're susceptible to that ball, that quick early ball where they've switched off and they don't drop early enough. And Hall uh, Halloway is a player. If she had support in the box, that's a goal. Hey, 
four ricochets off Ponsong Cam. Falcon couldn't gather, so now it's Kinger. Cry of frustration from TJ Vlinich. See these 50-50 battles. Steph Catley has the studs up. There shouts for the free kick. Falcon, I don't think we've been able to really see her, her full box of tricks today. Really struggled to get the service with possession higher up the park. They're very good when play breaks down, though. Well, a miscue from Kennedy puts it at the feet of Halloway and not enough time to control the final shot. There's errors starting to creep in. She needs to do better there. Melbourne City make a mistake like that. The other team, you have to punish him. You can see Williams is off the line. Far post was begging to be played. And that's what Rich Byrne talked about prior to this match. He said they haven't been clinical enough in front of goal. You really need to punish teams when they make mistakes like that in the back line. showing perhaps why they're under pressure at this point of the season. For Wanderers, perhaps the, uh, the hope that they can keep their season alive. Roberts looking for the head of Halloway, who leaps. Back with Lineich and Wanderers will get another go. holding firm. Looks pass ends up stray back with Ponson Cam now for the Wanderers. Bonta. And it's Pieti who tries to run the ball down on the far side, but uh, Wanderers throw it is. Well, that was beautiful play here in the midfield for Western Sydney Wanderers. One touch, two touch, and then switch. Again, just that final pass, not good enough. They, uh, they're equal to the task with the, the midfield play. Some great touches off Labonta. Understanding with Fonsong Camp. Just five minutes remaining in this first half here. Round nine of the Westfield W League. Can one of these sides break the deadlock before the halftime whistle? Valdos starts the playoff again for the Wanderers. relishing her opportunity to come and play here. She was the first Dutch player in the NWSL in America. Not the first here, but uh, she's joined by a fellow countrywoman, of course, in Malus Piete. And the card shown by Kate Jakowicz. On Marushka Valdis. Well, I wonder if this was for a, an earlier challenge on Tyler J. Vlanich here on the left, and I, I don't think she's got the right player. I don't know she hasn't. It's Alex Roberts. It was a really late challenge. She has to retract <laughs> the one on Valdis. <laughs> well, Valdis did look very uh, <laughs> perturbed by that decision. You might see that one taken back. It is for that challenge. Yeah, Alex Roberts come down very, very hard on the sideline here. Took a while for Vlanich to get up. Well, the 
brief pause as the uh, decision is entered into the referee's notebook. Jakowicz gets us underway again with the Wanderers throw. It's Fishlock that picks up the scraps on that occasion. Now Simon battling with Ellie Brush. Now Valdis. Wyman hoping perhaps to find one of her strikers off on a run. It's Halloway now. Ponson Cam. Still with Ponson Cam. Manages to evade Catley. And fortunately, unfortunately, that's just beyond Olivia Price. Linage nips in to stop the break of the Wanderers with just a couple of minutes to go. Which of these uh, coaches would have the most instructions at the halftime break? You think Rich Byrne would be pretty happy that there's no uh, score to the visitors? Well, happy and, and unhappy in the same breath. I think they've had opportunities. You think of the Ellie Brush miss. Just didn't connect well enough with the ball and then Halloway. With a couple of opportunities. Yeah, real opportunities that uh, they really could put themselves in a good position. But he'd have to be happy with the way that they're defended today. I think that they've found a solution for each each attack from Melbourne City. And Melbourne City have, have, have really struggled when Western Sydney Wanderers keep them in front. It's only when they break them down and turn them around have they looked a bit dicey in the back line. It was all your carry Kinger that put Melbourne City back in possession. Now Kennedy. The blue shirts start to move down the pitch. Stott to Hatch. Defence from Kalia Hogg. Oh, careless work gives the ball back to Melbourne City. Hatch, Simon, Stott, Ashley Hatch again. Defence once more from Hogg, now back to Rebecca Stott. Lewick tries to tip it over the top of the Wanderers' defence and get behind those lines to no avail, but still. Melbourne City in possession. As we go into the last minute of time added on before we hear the half-time whistle. And the Wanderers have one more 4A. I think Falcon thinks so. Still with Falcon. And the Wanderers will have another corner. Perhaps, perhaps this last kick of this half yield as a result for them. They do have uh, over 50% of their goals this season from set pieces. They've got great aerial threats in Valdes and Ellie Brosh. And the service has been great today. Out, out, out. Right at the top of the area. It's down at the Wanderers' feet, and uh, Jackowitz says she's seen enough for that half. Well, certainly plenty of opportunities, perhaps for both sides. Melbourne City maybe a little bit impatient, but at the other end, Erica Halloway, Lee Falcon, and others could not make it count for the red and black. So at the halftime break here at ANZ Stadium, it is still Western Sydney Wanderers zero, Melbourne. City zero. So at nil all, let's go down and hear from one of the players with Amy Duggan. Thank you very much, Seb, with Ellie Brush. Ellie, you must be happy with the score at the moment. Um, yeah, pretty happy to keep him keep a clean sheet here in the first half. Um, obviously, our last pass probably is letting us down at the moment, and we'd like to have, see more success out what, of that. What else would you like to see happen in the second half? Uh, probably a bit more pressure on their midfield. Um, 
yeah, don't give them too much respect and just go for it. And what has been working for you? Um, we've been able to keep the ball pretty well, play it around the back, and Jada's amazing in goals, and um, she's really helping us out. The talk's really good. And you had a really good chance back there oh, with the header, and it just uh, just went shy. Yeah, um, <laughs> like to have that one again, and but good defence as well. All right, good luck in the second half. Thanks very much. Anne. Stick around here on Fox Sports. Gary Van Egmond and myself will be at the pod to go through all the first half action and what to expect in the second half. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to W League on Monday with Western Sydney Wanderers and Melbourne City nil-nil at the halftime break here at ANZ Stadium. Proving just how close this competition is in the W League. Gary Van Egmond joins me again to have a chat about all the action in the first half. There was action of plenty, no goals scored, Gary, but what are your initial thoughts? Yeah, look, I think both teams are very, very cautious. They understand that if they lose this game, it's going to be uh, a, a difficult one for them in, in regards to, to the run to the final. So they're, they're ensuring that they try to keep their, their goal intact and, and, and both teams are using different tactics. You've got Wanderers who are basically dropping to ensure that you know they're, they're not getting it done in behind with a, with a pace of Hatch or, 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 or Kaya. And then you're looking at uh, the opposite uh, end of the park where um, you know City look a little bit vulnerable in regard to the transition where, where Wanderers are trying to hit on the, on the counter. So it's, it's, a, it's a game of, uh, of balance in, in regards to both teams. Almost there for the taking, but the stats, they will tell a picture to us, expecting City to dominate possession as they generally do. Let's have a look at that. It's not as big as I thought it would be, but those total shots, a little more even than I thought. Yeah, look, as we said, you know, on transition, the, the Wanderers have had uh, a, a number of chances and obviously from a, a couple of set pieces. Um, I, I just think I'd like to see a lot more from City, you know, in, in particular in that front third. They don't play out of position, and what I mean by that, the wide players don't drift inside. Um, there's, there's, there's not uh, too much linking up in regards to the, um, the, the midfield and the front third because the space is too big, and I think that's probably the biggest issue that Jess Fishlock has in regards to getting into the game because the spaces are so big. Um, and if, we, if they were to play out of position a little bit more and, and drop into, into the pockets, those wide areas, I, I think you'd find better combinations and more chances. It was a fairly slow start to the game by W League standards. Uh, Western Sydney Wanderers found their feet about midway through the game and then had probably the better of the chances that we've seen, especially of off the corner in the 32nd minute but here are a couple of the chances someone who's been impressive obviously Erica Halloway playing a little out of position and up front today but she, she's getting the ball yeah she's really offering a thread in behind and uh, and you can see that they're looking for every time they win that ball in their defensive third or mid third they're looking to see how they can uh, to, to, to find Erica and to be fair to Erica she's making some really good runs without the ball and here we can see you know her, her movement in the front third getting a little bit lucky there Alana three off the tee but um, you know she's doing some really good things They've definitely, as I said, had the better of the chances in that one where Ellie Brush took the corner and, and Halloway's uh, header just missed the post, uh, nearly put them up. And it would be so interesting because they're yet to, they're yet to, to lead and score, the, score a game and, and win from that position. Uh, Melbourne City, on the other hand, taking a lot of shots from outside the box, Gary. Yeah, well, that's because obviously Wanderers have dropped so deep and it's making it very difficult to play in behind. And that's what we're talking about, to try and see if we can get some of those wide plays. And here's a great example that Kai's playing as a nine. Here, here's Tyler on the, on the left-hand side. But how many people are getting in the box? I mean, the distance is so far. Uh, if, Kai, if Kai drifts out wide, we want to see someone uh, taking up a central position. And again, a little bit similar to, to what we've just been speaking about. So if they can have better starting positions and look to see... And, and look to see how they can get themselves in better starting positions in the building up because they are getting time on the ball in regards to the building up that I think they can uh, find that the, the passing will become a little bit shorter and with the shorter passes it's much easier, much harder for defenders to defend that. Western Sydney Warriors playing a bit more of a block defence as, a, as a, a coach. How would you break that down and involve perhaps a player like Jess Fishlock getting in there and moving the ball a little bit more? Yeah, again, it's, it's, it's from the, uh, the perspective of looking to see how we can try and get probably... They still need to try and stretch the opposition in regards to the Wanderers' defence. And um, I think the, the likes of the fullbacks, Steph Catley and, and Stott, need to start to get a lot higher, especially when they're dictating time on the ball in this middle third. 
Uh, and then once that occurs, then we can start to see the, the wide players drift in, and that's when the, the magic should start to begin. I mean, realistically, the, the only reason why I feel that at this stage that City look better are more so because of the, the, the individual brilliance that what uh, the Melbourne City players have in, in comparison to what the Wanderers have. That's really been the main, the main difference. Which is what we talked about on paper before the game. So this game's been very spread out. That was the other thing that we talked about during the match, that neither team's really pushing up. It'll be interesting to see how they go. The Wanderers haven't kept a clean sheet this season. Can they hold out Melbourne City? We will find out all the second half action coming up with Steph Rance and Sarah Walsh in commentary right here on the W League on Fox Sports. Well, at halftime here at ANZ Stadium between the Western Sydney Wanderers and Melbourne City, the scores are still locked at nil all. And it's been a very exciting and fairly tense first half we've had here as the players start to make their way out. And uh, we'll hear from the assistant coach of Melbourne City in just a moment. I wonder uh, what the message has been in the rooms at halftime. So let's hear what he had to say when he spoke to Amy Duggan. Joined by Paul Kilpatrick after the half-time. Uh, Paddy was pretty vocal out here. How was it in the change room? Yeah, look, he was, uh, he was quite positive. All he said was uh, basically if we could play the ball a bit quicker, play forward rather, we, we tended to, to go back more than forward. But overall, he was pretty happy with, um, with the way we played. So, yeah. Instructions for the second half? Just move the ball quicker, uh, be more positive, uh, back yourself. And that was about it. All right, good luck. OK, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much to Paul Kilpatrick for his time. And uh, what do you make of that message, Sarah? Well, look, they have controlled the match. I think that in that department, they've um, they've been able to hold on to the ball. Obviously, they've had 60 percent possession. But I think that uh, it'd be strange to think that he he was he wasn't unhappy about the couple of mistakes that have been made in in their back half. Someone like a Brisbane Roar, a Sydney FC, would really really put them away today. Uh, and another, and you know, obviously Newcastle Jets. You give teams like that a chance, and, and they take them. Western Sydney Wanderers haven't been able to do that in the first half, but you know, if they really open the door for this team, the Western Sydney Wanderers will punish them eventually. So they really need to cut that out of their game. And, and I don't think they've been too clinical in front of goal. I don't think they've used the width enough. Uh, they've got an amazing player in Steph Catley. I'd be asking TJ Vlanich to come inside and open up that space for her and really for a quick release but I think yeah Western Sydney Wanderers as I said have, have done a really good job so far they need to keep that up for another 45 well let's see if they can maintain that pressure Western Sydney Wanderers stand ready Melbourne still in their huddle as is their want lot of discussions going on and Captain Steph Catley having the last word as the City players jog into position the Wanderers get us back underway in this half. Who will prevail as Jakowitz's whistle sets us off and running again. I wonder conversely what uh, Rich Burns' message was to his players. He would have been, again, pretty happy with the defensive effort. However, he did say pre-game that they needed to be more clinical in front of goal and he'd really like to see that ball in the back of the net. They've uh, not scored many. Seven goals scored this season. Only ten conceded. Perhaps he'd like to see that the other way around. Yeah, I think one thing it's which is very easy to do in theory but I think Jess Fishlock's been able to pick up way too much ball with space in the midfield. We need to cut that out and possibly have Labonta start a little bit closer to her. And her hatch goes running off and she's delivered a lovely ball for Kaya Simon. Kaya winds up, has a shot, it's palmed over the bar by Wyman. Got a touch on it. That's where Melbourne City are so dangerous. Well, it's when they can get Kaya Simon with space in behind. They haven't been able to do that in the first half. And the ball's early. That's so important. But Kaya Simon didn't actually have another option other than to shoot there. It's not a bad option in the end. But again, they, they really struggled to get the numbers in the middle of the box. Good result in the end anyway. 
Yep, City have corner, which will be delivered by Barnes. Away! It's flat and low and knocked away by Yukari Kinger. as uh, more fans start to trickle in in anticipation of the evening ahead. They'll be fortunate to be able to watch their women's side in action for another 45 or so, and then it'll be the men of both the Wanderers and Melbourne City later on this evening. The match kicking off about 5 to 8. King once again working so hard. She's got so much in that engine, the way she covers the the entire field from box to box. Absolutely extraordinary. Stop back to Hatch. Couldn't get it through to Fishlock and it is Labonta that sends the Wanderers once more on their way. Kennedy Oh, Kennedy slips. Was initially uh, not outrun by Lee Falcon. The Wanderers can't capitalise. Stop to Kinger. And Kinger's put it there for Jess Fishlock. And oh, the flag was late, but did go up. Well, this would be close. This would be very close. And the run in behind was dangerous. They really haven't been able to create that movement and allow that space in there. It's a tough one to call with Ellie Brush. Seems as though she's in line with Fishlock. And they got lucky there, either way. That allowed that space in behind. Well, as Melbourne City uh, launch another incursion into the area, actually. Hatch is beaten to the ball by Kalia Hogg. Well, they haven't started the way they started the first half, Steph. They've been a little bit reactive. They just seem a, a pace off. One wonders how long it will be before we see the uh, injection of perhaps a Jodie Taylor. Melbourne City do with this corner first. Well, decent delivery was there for well, a couple of the blue shirts. A high foot from Barnes here. Lucky escape from the West Sydney Wanderers. Really struggling to get out of their own half. You can see maybe that's why uh, Patrick Kisnorvo's Seems so comfortable at half time. He has a lot of faith in his team's ability to be able to really just chip away at teams, keep applying the pressure, and eventually they'll be rewarded. Well, can the Wanderers make them pay on this occasion? Assessing their options now, Roberts. Oh. Dangerous throw, a little, bit, uh, a little dangerous. And the Wanderers being forced to track back all the way to Wyman. And seen Price with a bit of space. Can't get past Stott. And it'll be a Melbourne City throw. It's time to see Jodie Taylor. She's warming up at the moment. who will, of course, join the Seattle Reign when she uh, gets back overseas in 2018. And 
from Arsenal, who uh, a nice Melbourne City linker, of course, coached now by Joe Montemuro. And a win in his first outing in charge. I wonder what he'd make of the uh, City team he coached to the title. Fishlock as uh, Melbourne City go back on the attack. Hatch. Should uh, run Labonta and Hogg still with Hatch. Can't find Kinger, and once again the last pass lets them down. Well, I think the difficulty is when you watch Melbourne City, and we've talked about it over and over again. They get measured on re uh, on previous results and success. They're a very different team, but. I think the difficulty for me watching this team is knowing that they have another five levels to go to and, and not seeing them get there for 90 minutes. The players that they have, I think, look across the park. I don't think we've seen the best of Kinga yet. Yeah, perhaps not, but uh, pretty decent bench as well for uh, for Melbourne City. As we said, uh, Jodie Taylor being prepared to come on. Riley Dobson's done a good job for them and... Uh, Oof. Almost on there for Kaya Simon, who went charging through. Wyman came out, made the uh, made herself big and reduced the angle to great effect. Well, this is what we weren't seeing in the first half. They've been able to get him in, in behind a couple times. Kaya Simon is, isn't one of the players you want to give too many opportunities to. By her own standards, probably should have done a bit better there. Jada Wyman made herself quite big. Oh, Sarah, you talk about uh, Melbourne City having a number of other levels as uh, well, washes harmly over the sideline for the Wanderers, but their run home is Melbourne Victory, sorry, Perth Glory next week, Melbourne Victory, Brisbane Raw and Newcastle. So they don't have the easiest time coming in. Yeah, but they've got a really tough draw, but I, you look at last week's, uh, the last, sorry, last match against uh, Sydney FC and Adelaide, I think on paper you probably would have handed that one to Sydney FC, but they really had to fight until the final minute. And I hear that they're training today. They've got a lot to work on. Well, if you look at that ladder, you can see just how congested that uh, that is in the W League. It's still anyone's to win. Brisbane in control at the moment. But, uh, Newcastle not far behind, Sydney in third and, uh, well, Perth Glory and form that Sam Kerr's been in. You can see when she's missing, just another glance at that, uh, that stretch of points and, well, quite frankly, with the, it's a current ladder, of course, um, with the current score and a point apiece for Melbourne City and Western Sydney Wanderers. Wanderers technically still in it, mathematically, as we say. They've got an even tougher road home, though, and oh, almost a uh, pickpocket by Simon once more. But the Wanderers' run home is uh, perhaps even more uh, perilous, which we'll look at in a minute as uh, Roberts goes tearing down, trying to deny Vlinich. TJ Vlinich, that's a neat ball for Lewick. Now Catley loops it up, and one uh, read that all the way into her hands. Was she perhaps looking uh, for Simon on this side? Well, yeah, the ball wasn't great. Way too much air on it. And again, the incursions continue to come from the blue shirts. Stott. on this side deemed no foul for Hatch back with Fishlock now Stott it's it to Kinger now Lewick Catley on the far side Julie gathers in Vlanich takes a tumble just to regain her balance but it is uh, 
Alex Roberts that comes off best in that battle and now a chance perhaps for Western Sydney to run away. They got lucky there. Just holding on to the ball. A little bit too long, Western Sydney Wanderers. They're struggling to get out of their own half. You can see they just look a little bit tired. And talking about tired, they've got this one to worry about now, Jody Taylor. So lucky to have her here playing in the W League. Yeah, Top goal scorer in the Euros, and she's in form. Can't wait to see what to, she can inject to this side. Not only top goal scorer at the Euro, she uh, scored the first hat trick at a major international. First time for other men or women. I think it's really fair to credit the W League to her success <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, she was. She was, she was all thanks out. to Melbourne Victory. Yeah, she was <laughs> kept out of the squad for a very long time, and I guess we all thought she should be in there after seeing what the damage she did in the W League, and and finally she kept knocking on the door. She kept coming back here and and producing world-class performances, scoring goals. She's finally there, and, and she's solidified a starting position up top for England, who are you know, they're the top of their game at the moment, yeah, ahead no of Australia feat. in the rankings. Exactly. It's no mean feat to uh, secure a starting spot there. And, well, she watches uh, Jess Fishlock try to cross in to find Simon to no avail. But, uh, Jody Taylor likely to replace TJ Vlanich, who's put in a decent shift. I think she's done a good job. I think she probably hasn't had enough service to be able to really show us what she's capable in a one-on-one -on -one position. Fishless crosses in, cleared initially by Kete. Still there for City, still there, Hatch. Comes on Cam just to get a boot onto it. Holloway goes back to Labonta. Eventually run down by Lauren Barnes at this end. Western Sydney spending uh, almost the entire opening part of this second half defending. I think that's going to get tiring. Stott to Fishlock. Lovely one two between the players. Still with Stott. Crosses. And it's cleared away by Alex Roberts on the far side. And she did have Vlinich charging in. Well, this is really clever play here from Melbourne City. Finally, they're able to get Hatch to come in and create this space for Stott. And Fishlock plays a beautiful ball in for Stott. Well defended from Alex Roberts. We've seen so many of those end in an own goal, which has done well. And again, they're defending for their lives here. Melbourne City slowly starting to open them up. Simon delivers another City corner. High at the top, headed in by Barnes. And then away by the Wanderers. Stop to Fishlock. Gets around Hogg. Still Fishlock. It's Pieter on that occasion. And Wanderers dancing with danger in front of their own goal. And Wyman says, no thanks. <laughs> Let's get it out of here. Melis Pieté. Can't find Halloway. Kinger. Oh, she knows what Simon and Catley can do. Brave work from Jada Wyman. Just to charge back towards her line and uh, collects. Well, that was really smart play. Well, brave and risky, I would say. The running back. <laughs> she needed to get back. I'm not sure she needs to be that far out of goal. Had Valdis contained Kaya Simon. I mean, all worked out in the end. She's got that kamikaze element to her game, hasn't she? Goalkeepers, they're all a, a little bit crazy, aren't they? They are. Now Kinger. Stott. Stott dispossessed by... Olivia Price. Now Halloway again, one on one with Kennedy. Finds Falcon who tumbles over Barnes. Picks up Ricard. 
It was a really strong challenge. Falcon had done a great job at using Laura Barnes's body. Barnes's rugby tackle to the ground. Again, they put themselves in a good position here, Wanderers. Really is one out attack though. Falcon didn't have a midfielder to play that ball to. Her only option was to try turn a defender. Kalia Hogg's opportunity now. Hogg delivers. There's a tumble in the box. Two Wanderers players have uh, seemingly perhaps fallen over each other. And we pause briefly. The change that we flagged earlier, it is Jodie Taylor back in the W League, this time in a Melbourne City shirt, replacing... TJ Linich. You can see she's not used to being a sub. She almost went out with that <laughs> pink bib on. I <laughs> don't think her sub status will last uh, too long. For those of you wondering, uh, Jodie Taylor joins as a guest player, which I think Sarah makes seven games she can appear in, so she didn't play last week despite being in the country. Clever work with uh, Melbourne City. Expecting of course, to uh, be playing finals football as Steph Catley charges down the left flank, tries to put it in front of Yukari Kinger. Oh, rather telegraphed it, perhaps. Lyman sends it on its way now with Falcon for the Wanderers. Pass leaves the ball behind. It's duly picked up by City. And to play with Kinger. On lovely work there, except the flag, of course, was already up on the near side. So in the space of 30 seconds, you get to see and watch this in the future for the rest of the half. Jody Taylor dictates where the ball's going to be played every single time. That's what she'll add to this team. Each time the midfielder had the ball, her hand is out. She hasn't made the run, and she forces the midfielder to play the ball. And that's what she adds that's different. You can see players understand where she wants it, where it's going to go. And then likewise, that second man run from the midfield or whether it be the other striker, everybody just has a great understanding. The first half, or even with Kaya Simon, it's not her style of game. She makes the run, she doesn't ask for it. As you predicted earlier, Jodie Taylor sitting uh, top with Kai Simon, who's going to be allowed to float a little bit wider. We talk about it a lot, but well, when you look at uh, the names in that Melbourne City attack, it is uh, truly impressive. Taylor and Simon, Fishlock, Kinger. All in the front line now it's uh, Brush who gets terribly dispossessed by Taylor who's bundled to the ground. No foul, welcome back perhaps from Ellie Brush. Yeah, it was a strong challenge. I think it's not such a bad idea for Melbourne City to want to turn this Western Sydney Wanderers team around. I normally play those long balls. I actually think, I've spoken about it before, they should do it more often. Mm, too casual from Pieta and uh, Rebecca Stop nips in. Fishlock can't get the desired, desired recipient for her pass. Comes on Cam. Price. This is better from the Wanderers. Roberts looks for options. A lot of blue shirts charging in, do their job, and now Stott. Simon back to Catley. Wanderers ruining perhaps another missed opportunity. Barnes a little bit casual initially, but now with Kai Simon. Paid close attention by Alex Roberts. Lewick straight onto the chest of Hatch. Hatch and King are almost tangled up. Simon, Fishlock. That's 
tipped over, still on, still on for City until it's funneled away. Well, you see, for most teams, that ball isn't on. It's way too tight in there to play. But these two have an amazing understanding, Fishlock and Taylor. She threads the needle. They get a corner from it. Defenders just have so much respect for this player. They drop, allow her to pick up the ball. It's the worst thing you can do. And Taylor stands ready in the middle of proceedings. All up, it's there, and well, it's eventually off a city foot as Wyman trots off to collect the ball. But you know, Jodie Taylor already made her presence very much felt. The ball can beat the defence here, Looked like a set play with Kinger coming out. I think I can count on one hand the opportunities the Wanderers have had over that halfway line in this half. It's uh, really been quite a battle for them. Yeah, you, I guess you've always wondered where their goals were going to come from. They had the two key opportunities in the first half and they just had to be taken. And now laid out again for a City. Taylor to Fishlock, but perhaps just beyond her reach. Wyman at the ready. How would Jada Wyman feel with those sorts of players charging in on you every three minutes? Well, she's been sweeping quite high, so expecting that the ball's going to be played, but you can see the class that these two have, Fishlock and Jody Taylor. And they're able to combine higher up the park. So they do again. That one astray as uh, Rachel Lowe gets prepared for the Western Sydney Wanderers. Down on the sideline. See her make her entry. Shortly, what do you think Rich Byrne might be thinking? What's he got to mix up? Well, I think they've really struggled to keep the ball. What have we got possession here? It's still at close to 60% for Melbourne City. Get some fresh legs on here. Olivia Price has done a fair amount of running in the midfield. Look, they, they've been a, there's been a gulf of distance between the strikers in the midfield uh, strikers midfield and defense for Western Sydney Wanderers count on the <laughs> count on your hand the amount of times Falcons touch the ball in this second half mm, not Alloway enough. not been able to get her on the ball well again a turnover in possession and City away again that combination Taylor oh, final touch not what she would have hoped you can just see the way Fishlock Simon and Taylor just charge up the pitch well, it's almost like they're playing with an extra striker at the moment. When Hatch pushes on forward, Fishlock has just been sitting around the 10 roll up there with Jody Taylor. Oh, the it's been a struggle just to get uh, any penetration down this end of the park see they weren't doing that in the first half Melbourne City easily just throw in straight to Ivy Lewick's feet and then they play out it's just been way too easy for them this second half there's been no real meaningful pressure on the ball oh, here a chance maybe for the Wanderers fortunately just as quickly turned over again first touch for Rachel Lowe another young Matilda She's also at the AFC Under-19 Championships actually scored for them against Vietnam. Another one of those talents of the future that we spoke about as Miles Piet uh, comes off the winner in a battle with Jess Fishlock. We've rarely called Pieta's name. She's hardly been able to get on the ball. She's just been chasing this entire game. Really difficult to stay tight on Fishlock or Kinger. Not saying something when you've got a player that's come over from uh, Ajax in the uh, top division of the Dutch league. Labonta's ball. Hot, waiting her. Falcon leaps and oh, low winds up, pulls the trigger. Unfortunately, off target as we 
have another substitution. This time Riley Dobson will make her way on and Ashley Hatch comes off. So like for like. Well, a tiny bit different. You'll see that Dobson, yeah, she flourishes when there's space and quick balls are played in behind. If they're going to be successful, that's probably how they should use her. Make sure that they turn this defence around. She can chase it down. And they can really force the mistakes from this Western Sydney Wanderers. Push numbers forward. But she loves to play wide too. And Hatch has been playing a little bit inside. Can really allow Stott to come forward as well on this right-hand side. What it does mean is that Melbourne City's pace has uh, only been increased. Dobson's awfully quick down the flanks. We remember seeing her for years at uh, the Newcastle Jets do exactly that. Will she be the difference here today for Melbourne City? Stop the chases. That ball down. Dobson's first touch looking for options. Oh, just goes wide of Jada Wyman's hand. Took a deflection on its way in. That's well, a great first run from Dobson. You could see she really stretches the defence. Hatch wasn't doing that. Hatch was playing really narrow and allowing the Wanderers to just stay as a, a tight, compact four. But with Dobson on the pitch, they've called for a handball here. City finally get their award. They've been knocking on the door. Jakowitz declares herself happy. In from Barnes. Plenty of heads there. It was a Wanderers one that got there first. Bounces out for Catley, puts it back in the mixer, headed away by Lowe. And by Dobson. All a bit messy, but uh, Wanderers survived for the moment. minutes or so remaining in this opening encounter for 2018. The score's still locked. Nil all. Not something many would have thought when this game kicked off. Wanderers have been valiantly defending, unfortunately not too creative at the other end. And City have not been able to breach that red and black defence as yet. Plenty of red and black shirts in the stands who are enjoying this clash with the men to come later. It's the Wanderers and Melbourne City men kick off in about an hour or so. Western Sydney Wanderers women fighting really for their season. This one we spoke in now pre-game about this perhaps being a grand final of sorts for the Wanderers. Are they playing with that sort of desperation, Sarah Walsh? Well, you could say they are. I think they're playing well within what they're capable of playing. I think defensively their back four have been amazing today. Look, let's not jinx them. There's 15 minutes to go, but so far they've, they've been able to stay compact and organised. It's a credit to Valdis and Ellie Brush. But as, as they do tire in this second half, Melbourne City will be able to create chances. Dobson out run on that occasion. Now it's at the feet of Erica Holloway. Holloway with Kennedy closing in and perhaps not enough time for Lee Falcon to react. And another opportunity goes begging. Well, they're dangerous when they get in these areas. Stott had been really dragged out and there was a gap in behind. Halloway was played and the ball was great. Just Fal Falcon couldn't finish. It's really just been the story of their season. Oh, 
Falcon scored last week. Can she make it two rounds on the trot? Headed in by Piet. Picked up by Dobson on this side, headed down. Third time lucky for Dobson or not. throw does find now it's Labonta turned over once more and now it's dangerous times for Western Sydney as the blue shirts start to stream forward Fishlock to Simon well, Taylor was waiting intercepted by Ellie Brush who saw what was unfolding Shows just how stoic the Wanderers defence has been. There's turnovers and counter-attacks from Melbourne City. The fact they've as yet borne no fruit. Well, Fishlock's ball just beyond Jodie Taylor. You could see there for a second Ellie Brush had lost Jodie Taylor. She knew the ball was coming and she dropped, but the ball's a bit more accurate. She was on goal there. She's, she's really been good in that department, Ellie Brush and Boulders today. Been just a step ahead of the game. Well, now it uh, could be there for Wanderers, still with the red and black shirts. Tech still on, Melbourne coming in to close them down. And Bonta. Falcon winds up. And she eventually pulls the trigger. Takes a heavy deflection, and it will be a Western Sydney Wanderers corner. Look at the players. They're down their haunches. They are tired. They're still creating chances here. Halloway is just, she's worked so hard. Falcon's still moving, keeping the ball. Von Sonken. She's been great. Certainly has. Oh, was high, Ellie Brush was there. She was out leap, still open for the Wanderers. Actually cleared by Fishlock. Looked like it might land nicely for Jodie Taylor. The Bonta streaming down and thought she might have inadvertently trodden on Stott's, Stott's boot. See, La Bonta, she's put so much pressure on the defence. Sonkin busy in defence. Kinga skips away and you know, Lewick stop back in the action on the near side. Well, that one's asking too much even of Jodie Taylor. See, Wanderers have just frustrated Melbourne City enough. You know, there's been moments of brilliance when they combine well up top. But for the most part, they've not been able to play out with the ball without pressure. I think that Western Sydney Wanderers, although they've they've stuck deep, they've just been organised, they've stayed compact, they've defended as a block. On the odd occasion, they get opened up. Can they do that for the next 10 minutes? Bonta's ball out of reach of Halloway. On for City by Stott. Now Falcon for the Wanderers. Kennedy nipping in. Doesn't quite make it to Taylor. And the Wanderers starting to perk up a bit now. Erica Halloway. Offside, but some real intent in red and black. I have, and it's been off the cuff. When play breaks down, they've looked the most dangerous. They've rarely built up an attack from the back line and, and build it up, but it's not what they're known for, and it's it's probably not what is going to win them games. They just they bring this unpredictability, and they counter so well. Taylor again into the fray. Now Roberts. Now 
Erica Holloway still running hard. Bonto can't can't find but Ponson Cam can. Labonta again. Hog. Piete. Straight into the gloves of Lydia Williams. Again, no, no real teeth in front of goal. All the Western Sydney side, something that has been lacking all season. How about for Melbourne City here with Riley Dobson? And a turn away from Hogg, gets the cross in, pounced on by Wyman. It's even Melbourne City weren't ready for that ball. Dobson had done a great job at keeping it. There's a ball and ricochets off Rachel Lowe. Halloway's racing to the ball, beaten there by Lydia Williams. Melbourne oh, City starting to look so slightly looser, perhaps a little bit too Casual as Raleigh Dobson charges down the other end. Cross is good. Oh, neat defence by Voldus. Oh, she's been good today. Smart. She knows she needed to be goal side then. Didn't give Jodie Taylor a sniff. You can see Melbourne City, when they turn them around, they look dangerous. They're able to get those balls in behind the defence. Stott. Oh, she feeds it through for Taylor. Oof. Labonta sends it back for Wyman. <laughs> well, that's great cover there from Labonta. She's back there deep defending. Oh, seven minutes of this match. Stott again. Pieter. He's starting to uh, show some energy in these last few minutes. that Wanderers defence hold form hold firm with yet another Melbourne City corner to come plenty of shirts in the area on leaping high Simon was the highest to head it down, but it's only back as far as Steph Catley now as Melbourne City wind up again. Impatience from Fishlock. Pieter and Labonta back to Valdis. Important for the Wanderers not to panic here. Brush. Diving Erica Halloway can't make contact, but Lee Falcon is lurking. Oh, that's neat from Rachel Lowe. Still Lowe tries the cheeky back heel, but doesn't outfox Ivy Lewick. Now Kinger. Dobson, Kennedy. Still not out of the city half. Wanderers back in possession. Now low Labonta. Labonta. She did. Wind up for a huge kick. And the shot was blocked. And now it's Jodie Taylor on the far side. Was waiting, headed down by Hogs. Is turning into a, quite a tight battle. Rebecca Stott now for City. Dobson. Could this be the breakthrough for City? Dobson cuts back and ball deemed to have rolled out. Well, she's held on to it too long here. Needed to play it earlier. But this is a really dangerous period here for Western Sydney Wanderers. They're going to want to get out of their own half. It's Melbourne City are playing with a little bit more desperation. They're going to take more risks. And I think if they, if they actually added a bit of that to their game throughout the regular 90, they just add something different to their game. And I, I think they're going to be dangerous now. They're going to play balls quicker. Well, as time ticks away, 
Dobson again blocked by Ellie Brush. Showing all the experience of 109 W League appearances. And the busy girl, Ellie Brush, already in pre-season training for uh, off-season sport. She's been a fantastic addition to the Wanderers' back line. Can they deny them yet again? This time the Yarda Wyman confident. Oh, she's having a great game today. You never know performance. You never know which Wyman's going to turn up, and I think that's fair to say sometimes she has some huge mistakes, but she's been sound today. Very strong in the back and, and very vocal too. So she doesn't get a lot of credit for organising this defence. Well, it's certainly come up trumps this season. No complaints with the uh, defensive end of the park. And can we get one in at the other end? Jokowitz has seen a foul on the far side. It's Steph Catley. It looks like she doesn't agree. Well, she's been quiet today. They've really not been able to utilise Steph Catley at all. <laughs> well, with just a couple of minutes of regulation time still on the clock, will it be the Wanderers that come away with a shock result to start 2018? is pacing his technical errors. And he's prepared to launch the ball in. Oh, you can hear the reaction of one of the players, which is, uh, <laughs> I think, what most people would have been thinking. That was <laughs> such a wasted opportunity. I'm sure she'd like to have that back. Yeah, to be fair, Labonta's service has been on point. It wasn't Labonta, sorry. But all their set pieces have been great today. Oh, that one. They're tired. They've been defending this entire match. They've done themselves proud if they pick up this point today. Or in the couple minutes, score a goal even. Well, they haven't been without their opportunities. Will they get another one before time runs out? Falcon can't bring it in. Slip and now it's fish lock. Wanderers' defence streams back. Kai Simon on the near side. Simon's cross in. Oh, it's cleared bravely away by Valdis. Another one of those clearances that you just hope isn't turned into your own net. Yeah, when your defenders are running back to goal, it's always dangerous. And the board goes up, signalling three minutes to be added on. Simon delivers, headed down by Kennedy. Not goal bound. So safety once more for Western Sydney. Just Sarah Walsh, two and a half minutes left. Would you have predicted this score 90 minutes ago? No, I thought we were going to see some goals from Melbourne City, especially. It's not too late. Stott's ball can't find its mark and collision between Taylor and Brush. King are keen to get proceedings underway briskly. Stott to Kinger. Back to the New Zealander. And it goes past Fishlock. Fortunately, Brush's clearance finds only Alana Kennedy who manages to get out of trouble. And Catley. Oh, it does land very nicely for Kinger. Simon's there, and there is the goal. Will that be the one that decides this match? You would think so, Jessica Fishlock. She is an absolute magician and she's done it again. Melbourne City with the opening goal 
in the final minute of the game. Well, Kai Simon's a difference here. Check out this ball. They find the width early. This ball had to be pinpoint. There were three defenders in the box. And Fishlock, she had to get the first touch. She had to finish it. And she does. And the class rises. That ball in here from Kaya Simon. They really haven't been able to get in behind this defence. And the one time they do, they execute it beautifully. Well, how many times has Jessica Fishlock <laughs> saved Melbourne City? And you would think with just seconds left on the clock that she has done it again today. Melbourne City look like they'll be taking all three points today, but absolute heartbreak for the Wanderers. Oh, it's heartbreak. And, and I talked about it. That ball has to be perfect from Kai Simon, and it hasn't been up until this point. Oh, City with their tails up. Is there another goal in this game as Raleigh Dobson charges down the far side? She's got Jodie Taylor sitting at the top of the area. And the brush says, no, thank you. Comes on Cam. Oh, trying to push the ball upward a little bit too. Optimistic. Catley, equally optimistic at the other end. Oh, it's pure heartbreak for Western Sydney Wanderers. They've been outstanding in defence. It's the one time they get turned around. They, they had the numbers in the box too. They'll be disappointed when they watch that back, but likes of Jessica Fishlock don't let opportunities like that pass by too often. She didn't today and she had the goal that made the difference. Opportunities for both sides here at ANZ Stadium. Wanderers disappointed after valiantly defending for so long. 92 minutes they managed to hold out the defending premiers for. Just that one moment of madness means that it is Melbourne City who start the year with all three points and it means that they edge up level on points with Perth Glory on the table. Fantastic performance from both sides, but at full time here at ANZ Stadium, it is Western Sydney nil, Melbourne City one. Well, Sarah Walsh, we'd actually mentioned that it looked like it had been coming for so, so long. We thought there might have been more goals in that game, but uh, well, Fishlock to the rescue once again. You'd say it's deserved, wouldn't you? They've, they've had plenty of chances. They did have plenty of chances, but uh, you were wondering whether it was going to come or not. And look, they hadn't been clinical enough, not even just in front of goal. The ball's into the box, and, and the time they get it right is when it matters. They left it late, they pick up the three points. Well, let's head down for some reaction on the pitch with Amy Duggan. Thank you very much, Steph. Joined by Erica Halloway. So unlucky. Erica, that is absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah, definitely. Um, we did leave it out, all out on the field, but unfortunately, the last few seconds of the game, we gave away. You must be so proud of the team's effort, though. They fought very hard and held them out for plus 90 minutes. Yeah, we did. We, um, we took it to them, which was our game plan. We didn't want to sit back. Um, and I thought we, we, were, we matched them, but unfortunately, we didn't get the result. What was good about the performance out there today, different to how you've been all season? Uh, like you said, we, we worked for each other. Um, everyone put in, there wasn't one player who just sat back and relaxed, we all, we all put in and unfortunately they snatched it at the end. It, it is a tough road home for you guys, you have the buy next week, plenty to work on and then a really tough road home. Are you, are you looking at the season like you can still get there? Uh, 100%, we're always positive. Um, we're starting to play a lot better, um, working for each other. Uh, we've got um, you know, girls that are pushing to get into the squad so there's a bit of depth there so it's good everyone's pushing each other. All right, Erica, well, good luck for the week after and uh, unlucky today. Thanks, Scott. We're joined now by uh, star of the day, I'd like to say. Welcome back to the W League, Jodie Taylor. It's great to have you out there. You must have been itching to get onto the field. I was. Um, it's great to be back here. Obviously, I haven't played in the league in a good few years, so um, I've only really just got in and adjusted uh, to the humidity and the heat, so it was good. I was going to say, how are you finding the change in temperature and the training? Yeah, um, it's a lot different than back in England right now. Um, today, I think we were a bit fortunate, at least the sun had gone down, but obviously it's a lot hotter and more humid uh, than back in Europe. And good to get the win under the belt. Oh, absolutely, it was a great ball by Kaya and um, you know, fortunately Jess finished it. Uh, left it a bit late, but a win is a win. And you'll be working hard this week and uh, hopefully gaining a starting spot for next week against Perth. 
yeah, hopefully, um, obviously, it's going to be a, a big game at home against Perth. Um, you know, we'll get back to the training field this week and hopefully um, have a good week and a good performance against Perth. Well, Jody, welcome back to Australia and congratulations on the win. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Let's back up to you, Steph. Thank you, Amy. Well, great to hear from Jodie Taylor. Great to see her back in the W League, uh, as if Melbourne City's standard needed improving. Uh, she certainly adds to it. You could see the effect she had immediately when she came onto the park. Yeah, with more time on the park, she'll create more opportunities and, and her movement up top is classy. So we get to see the goal again here. They switch it out really early. You can see uh, the Wanderers back four were out of position, out of shape. And it was very rare, rare to see that. That stayed solid and tight and narrow compact throughout the match the class rises above here Jess Fishlock leaves it, Kinga plays it early, that's so important it's played early and the ball, the ball was perfect from Kaya Simon, really rose above there certainly did, they uh, were desperate to get those points today they have management, youngsters like uh, Ponsong Cam had a great day but as we heard the disappointment in er Erica Holloway's voice uh, they really thought they could have got at least a point out. Is that technically season over, you think, for the Wanderers? No, oh, look, it's going to be tough from here. And that, and that just hurts so much when you defend so well like that to be conceding a goal in the final minutes of a match. Uh, I think they, they've done themselves proud. They've got a lot, a lot of areas to, to develop, and especially up front. But defensive unit, they're up there for me with some of the, de the best defences in this league. Well, the player of the match does not come from the winning side today. She didn't get all three points, but uh, she's now with... Amy Duggan. Joined by our NAB player of the match, it is Lola Bonta from the Western Sydney Wanderers. Absolutely heartbreaking to go down the way you did, but congratulations on our player of the match Thank award you. today. You played really hard and tough opposition. Yeah, I mean, I think great team, our both teams played really good. The possession sometimes was incredible on both sides. So just hard in the last couple of minutes when we lost, but I think both teams played really well. I give my girls all the heart. I mean, I was struggling out there and every single girl had my back, so. You know you're playing against some really tough opposition, some quality players. How did you prepare for that differently? Yeah, I mean, a bunch of this team actually I play with in America, I play against them. So we just shook hands after the game. We were like, yep, same thing, same old play. So, you know, it's hard. We try and prepare and it's just unlucky with the outcome. And you're going to have a week off now with the bye and then a pretty tough run home, including a couple of the top sides. Um, how are you going to change what, what you've done, take what you've done today into those games? Yeah, I mean, I think it just shows today that we can play with the top ranked teams. I mean, we did really, really well. And when we play the harder teams, I think it brings out the best in us. So I'm stoked to play the top teams coming up. And I think the girls will definitely step up. Commiserations on the loss today, but congratulations on being our player of the thank match. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, great work from Lola Bonta. Uh, another class act here in the W League. Not enough to get them all three points today. Melbourne City's three points will lift them level with Perth. Now, Sarah, that's uh, a pretty tough road home for them. Uh, how do you see them playing out the rest of this season? Uh, they need to be better than what they did today. They really struggled to create a good number of chances to be able to finish in front of goal, but I think that'll change with Jodie Taylor spending more time on the pitch. Uh, more service into her and I guess more threats and threats on goal. That'll be great. More combinations between Fishlock and Jodie Taylor. I can't wait to watch the end of this season, uh, Jodie Taylor especially. Well, we've got a cracking match, of course, coming up next week when uh, Melbourne City travel to meet Perth Glory. And, uh, well, that's going to be very exciting. But for now, thanks for your company today for the start of 2018. That's it from the W League, but don't go away. After the break, all the action from the Hyundai A League. We'll see you soon.